Welcome into Drew's Daily Diamond for Tuesday, September 3rd, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games on the diamond here for MLB games coming your way. Hopefully you enjoyed Labor Day weekend. Let me know in the comments below where you agree, where you disagree. Your MLB picks for tonight all is welcome, guys. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. As we got first game up here, top of the card. 650 Eastern. We are heading to the Sunshine State here with the Tampa Bay Rays hosting the Minnesota Twins. David Festa on the hill for the Twins. The Rays going with the lefty Springs. Commanded a minus 115 home favorite price tag. Total of eight. The Twins come in 12 games over 500. This is the second game of their road trip. And Festa, the 24-year-old out of Seton Hall, he's been up and down this season in eight starts so far. Last time out was a good one. Six innings, two or two hits, two runs given up, seven strikeouts. He's up against Springs here, the 31-year-old out of Appalachian State, um, App State grad. The former Mountaineer, six starts on the season. He started out on, on the IL, so coming off an injury. He's given up 30 hits, 33 strikeouts, and 27 innings. So he's getting the Ks, getting the hit around a little bit. I think Festa for the Twins has uh, a good shot to have a – a solid start here. This Rays lineup has been qu- kind of quiet of late. And the, the Minnesota side of things, their lineup, top five lineup overall, guys. I think they get enough done here. I think it's wrong team favored. We get a plus price heading into the overnight market with the Twins. Plus 101. It's the Twins over the Rays in the drop. Next one up, 740 Eastern time. Heading to the Windy City here with the Chicago Cubs hosting the Pittsburgh Pirates. NL Central Division matchup. With Paul Skeens on the hill for the Pirates. Justin Steele, the lefty, going for the Cubbies. Minus 120, that's Steele and the Cubbies at home. Guys, I'm talking about this card uh, a little bit earlier than normal. Actually, the Monday night games are going on as I'm talking. but going to be traveling on Tuesday morning, so wanted to get the information out there. And I think that the the Cubs are actually short in this one. Minus 120 right now. They're 71 and 66. And coming into this series, they've won five straight, eight of their last nine. And Pittsburgh, yes, Skeen's on the hill. He definitely demands respect. Number one pick overall just last year out of LSU. Go Tagus. 2-2 ERA, 136 to 26 strikeout to walk ratio. But the angle here is, Both pitchers are off back-to-back seeing the same opponent, meaning last time out, just last week, they faced the Cubs, whereas Steele faced the Pirates. And in that game, Skeens went five innings, two earned with six strikeouts. The thing here is Justin Steele also went five innings, two earned with six strikeouts. So he matched Skeens against the same lineup that he's going to be seeing here. And when you add on to that, the Cubs have a lot better bullpen at this point. By my numbers, they're number nine, whereas whereas Pittsburgh is number 27, one of the worst bullpens over the last five weeks. They've also lost five of six heading into this series. And Steele overall, I mean, a three-flat ERA, three-flat FIP as well. And we went over the numbers his last time out against the Pirates. He matched Skeens. I think uh, the 20 cents is a little bit short here. We'll ride the hot and fade the cold as the Pirates have lost five of their last six. It's minus 120 on the Cubs over the Pirates in Wrigley. We're heading to New York up next. City Field to be exact. 7-10 Eastern. Game two of the series between Boston and New York. It's the Mets here, though, guys. David Peterson, the lefty, going for the Metropolitans. Cutter Crawford going for the Red Sox. Total of eight. Minus a dollar and a quarter. That's the Mets as the home favorite. Nine games over 500. Winning three straight coming into the series. Now, Boston, three games over 500, and they got Crawford on the hill, 28 year old out of Florida Gulf Coast. And one thing that I've noticed, he's he's been in the major leagues like four or five years now, and he's already 30 innings past any year prior, the maximum that he's thrown. And when that happens with, with pitchers, sometimes I look to go against them, meaning they're going to start to fade off at the end of the season, you know, come the month of September. So we'll see if that happens. He, he, he actually started to, and then the last couple starts, he's been a little bit better. So we'll see what happens with this. This is definitely uh, one to watch watch closely with Crawford, but he's got a 4-1 ERA, decent numbers. Now he's up against Peterson here. Love this kid. He's been a money machine. 28-year-old out of Oregon, the former duck, back to back to back. 
against Arizona, Baltimore, and San Diego. Three, you know, better lineups in MLB and betters being uh, being light with it. Three of the best lineups in Major League Baseball. He went seven plus innings, two earned runs or less in all of them. So he's riding a hot left hand here. He's eight and one overall on the season, two eight ERA. The Mets overall have the better lineup uh, overall against handiness of pitcher. And uh, they rank higher in the bullpen ratings here, guys. So I think the Mets, minus a dollar and a quarter, it's short as well. Let's jump on the Metropolitans at home in City Field over the Red Sox. Got one game left. Make sure to check out uh, the premium picks. Wagertalk.com, Drew Martin, experts page. 4% big bet up and available for Tuesday night. We got college football, NFL getting set to go. So uh, three sports right now. Uh, good stuff to check out and always appreciate everybody uh, commenting below, looking to grow the show. It helps out the algorithm. Punch that like button if you're liking the content, guys, as we got last game up here, Texas Rangers hosting the New York Yankees. Carlos Rodon and Andrew Haney in a battle of Southpaws, minus 130. That's the Bronx Bombers as the road favorite, eight in the hook being the total. The Rangers come in seven games under 500, but they've won five of their last six coming into the series. So Hey, it looks to be a little bit uh, too little too late for the Rangers, but at least they're they're starting to to play a little bit better baseball of of recent. Yankees 79 in 58. They got Radon on the hill here. His last time versus the Rangers, he went 5 innings, zero earned, just 3 hits given up, the first rounder out of NC State, but his last two road starts, he's been knocked around. And that was against the Nationals and the Tigers, not exactly murderers row. He only lasted nine innings in those two starts, giving up nine earned in 15 hits. So a little bit shaky on, on Rodone here. And Andrew Haney, first rounder out of Oklahoma State, back-to-back -back solid starts. But his last time seeing the Yankees, he only went four and two-thirds, giving up four runs with a six-fifth. So the Yankees saw him pretty well. I actually think that, that eight and a hook here, guys, I think it's a little low. I think I think this gets up into the double digits. I like up and over with the Bronx Bombers and the Rangers in the last game we're breaking down here on the Tuesday slate. Drew's Daily Diamond. In recap, guys, we got the uh, the Rangers and the Yankees up and over eight and a half. We get the Mets minus a dollar and a quarter over the Red Sox. We get Justin Steele and the Cubbies minus 120. We're listing all these pitchers that we're betting on. Uh, we are going action in the Yankees and Rangers game. And then the Minnesota Twins with Festa on the hill, plus 101 with the dog barking in that one over the Rays. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. As always, we'll be back uh, for Wednesday's show, so stay tuned for that. And until then, cash those tickets. Thanks for tuning in.